Ses Bertram. Mm. Vi ses.
The technique I use here, I really like because you don't need any additional equipment. Before we move on, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace lets you build professional looking websites without any knowledge about coding and web design. You simply choose one of the many great looking templates and by dragging and dropping photos and changing the text and colors, you can make it your own. You can create beautiful galleries to showcase your work and it's very easy to update the gallery with your latest photos. It also has built-in e-commerce so you can start selling your prints, calendars and digital products. So if you need a new website, head over to squarespace.com to start your 14 days free trial. And you can use the off code Morten Hilmer to get 10% off your first purchase. I've put a link in the description. I've just spent seven days in the forest doing nature photography and bushcraft. And in this behind the scenes, I just want to share two good techniques with you. The first one is uh, the techniques I technique I used when I was photographing stars and the campfire and the second was a really smart technique I just learned uh, this trip uh, a pot hanger uh, that you can adjust with just a stick and a string so uh, let's start it with a with a camera technique so when when you're photographing the the stars everything is just easy because you basically make one exposure that fits the stars um, if you're photographing a fire, you make an exposure that is good for a fire. But the problem is when you're uh, combining the stars and a fire, because these two subjects need two different exposures. That, let's say the fire, in this case, needs 5 seconds and the stars needs uh, 20 seconds. So um, the technique I use here, I really like because you don't need any additional equipment. Everything you need is your camera and a hand and a little uh, counting skills because what you do is first you want to figure out how much uh, does the fire need, like how many seconds does the fire need and then you need to know how many seconds does the star needs. So you basically make two exposures, uh, one to figure out the sky, one to figure out the fire. In this case I figure out, as I said, 20 for the stars five for the fire. I then set my camera to a 20 seconds exposure. I always set the camera to the subject that needed the long exposure. And then in my mind, I remember uh, the five second for the fire. I put my hand in front of the lens, or in this case, a few fingers just to cover the fire. I move them close to the lens without touching the lens, because if you have them too far away, you will see the silhouette of the fingers. Looking at the LCD screen, having moved my fingers, I can see I'm now hovering the fire so that I don't see it on the screen. And then start counting. Press the release button and I count to 15 while holding my fingers here. While these 15 seconds are running, the fire will not get exposed on the sensor, only the stars. The moment I after counting to 15, I remove my fingers and now the sky will get the rest of the 20 seconds exposure plus the fire will get the five second the fire needs. And in this way, you're actually getting the perfect exposure for the fire and you're getting the perfect exposure for the sky. This technique can also be used for other landscape photography where you need to hold a little light back from the sky or you need to hold a little light back from the foreground. So I like this because I don't have to bring filters and I can always get almost the result I like when I'm out there. The second uh, technique I want to share here was a technique that I learned from my friend Bertram uh, who uh, I was together with in the forest. And uh, before we start with that, let me just introduce Bertram very short. He's um, not just a tour buddy, he actually moved in on this farm. He is a blacksmith, a bushcrafter, and uh, he also makes YouTube videos. He showed me this pot hanger, and that is smart because you need a string and you need a stick. And as you can see here, I'm holding it in my hand. It's just a knot uh, uh, that you can actually adjust up and down depending on how much heat your little pot needs. In this case, we were cooking this duck soup 
and uh, sometimes it needed to get very low to the fire but as we moved more uh, firewood in and the fire became more uh, hot we had to adjust it so it came up so i think that is extremely smart um, i'll put a link to bertram's video from this trip because while I was doing photography in the floating height and with the telephoto lens and doing landscapes, Bertram was doing a bushcraft. And uh, so yeah, you can jump over to see what he was actually doing. I think that was it for this time. Uh, maybe I should just update you on the calendars because I'm really happy with that. Uh, thank you to everyone who has ordered the, two, uh, the 2021, I think it's called, calendar. Um, it's sold out now and we're not even in the beginning of December, so I am so, so happy. Yeah, and last update. Um, now we are getting ready for our next trip, also bushcraft and nature photography. Uh, this time it'll be more wildlife. We are going seven days again and of course I'm looking forward to sharing that video with you. So I hope you can use the two uh, tips, a bushcraft tip and a photography tip and uh, yeah. See you out there.